Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about nickel plating. If you saw my last video, you'll know that the uh, Radio Craftsman RC8 that we're working on, I removed the transformer and I stripped the top clamshell and I'm going to nickel plate it to make it chrome or at least shiny and match the rest of the radio. We're going to go through that process in this part one video. This part one video is about preparing the solution to do the plating. A couple things you need to pay attention to. First of all, it's using vinegar and salt. It's going to smell your house up. Don't do it in the house. Do it outside. Do it in the garage, do it in the driveway, your backyard, your patio, whatever. Just don't do it in the house. Also, this process releases some hydrogen. That's part of the natural process of running the, uh, the current uh, through the solution. It's not enough to blow your house up, but you don't want to take any chances. So just do it in a well-ventilated vent area outside, and you should be in good shape. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the ingredients that you need to do this and then we'll get into the actual process. You can see some of it working. I'm also using a power supply for this thing. It's a, a DC power supply, 32 volts, uh, up to 6 amps and you'll see that in the video as well. So if you're going to follow along, please do. You'll also see part 2 when we actually um, plate the clamshell, which I have right here somewhere I can show you. Here it is. Here's the clamshell that we're going to be plating. And we'll talk more about how you prepare this thing for plating when we get to that part. Okay, everybody. Enjoy part one. See you in a bit. If you're thinking about doing some plating, nickel plating, here's what you need. You need some white distilled vinegar. I have a gallon here. You need some common salt without iodine. And you need some distilled water. When you make your plating solution, all you really need is the vinegar and the salt. After your solution is complete and you're ready to actually do the plating, you want to rinse off the piece that you're going to be plating in some hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid, and you want to rinse it with distilled water and make sure it's completely clear while you're wearing gloves. Any oils and things you need to get off. So that's what the water's for. And of course you need some nickel plates, and that's really all you need to do this in a power supply. The ratio that I used of salt to white vinegar, by the way, for a gallon of white vinegar, I used about three tablespoons of salt. That's what about what I put in there. So that seemed to work for, for a gallon. Okay, guys, we're going to do some, uh, we're going to start step one of our plating process. Plating process is two steps. First, you have to make a plating solution, which we're going to do in this jar that has a cover and a lid that we can screw on. And then when that's done, then we can put the piece in to plate it. So part two is going to be about the actual plating process. So what we have inside here is, let me just take you in there and show you. You can see we have two pieces of nickel just kind of hanging in there, right there. You can see that one, right there. And we have it connected to copper wires coming out. And those wires are connected to our power supply through these banana clips right here. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to put in some distilled vinegar, distilled white vinegar. We're going to fill that up. Well, I'm not going to let the copper wires be um, covered in this. It's just going to cover the nickel. you got to remember, this is why we do this outside, because this is vinegar and it's going to smell. Now, when you use thinner strips of nickel, it's faster. This is going to take longer because that nickel that I have in here is very, very thick. And this jar will last me a lifetime, probably. Let's see where we are. We've got a little more to go. I'm going to use the whole gallon. There we go. That's just about right. Okay. I do want to pull this one out a little bit. Just like that. I think you can see that. Okay, now, next step is we want to put a little bit of salt in here. And the reason why we need the salt is it helps the conductivity. So let's get the salt opened up. Just plain old table salt we're using. You don't use a lot. Let's see how much we're going to use here. I'm going to start with that. So 
We're going to mix that up. Okay, that's all good. Alright, so next step. Let's turn on our power supply. Let's put our, our, everything down where it needs to be. There's our power supply. I think you can see that. It's a little bit of a glare here because we're outside. Let's go up to 3 amps. And you're going to start to see bubbling happening here when we get this going. I'm going to go 32 volts all the way up. I'm going to go up to as many amps as we can get to. And if you look right here, you can see we're starting to get some bubbling already. See it? So that plating process has begun or at least the dissolving process of the nickel. We're not even running an amp here. Let's mix up that, uh, that salt a little bit better. Let me give you a top-down look. See that hydrogen? That means the plating process is working. Okay, so we are going to leave this thing and sit here and next time when we come back this is going to be green we hope <laughs> that's the plan anyway I think if I put a little more salt in there we may be able to get a little bit more out of it let's experiment just a little bit put a little more salt we do have a get almost a gallon of liquid in here Okay, by putting that salt in, we brought our, um, our power supply up to 1 amp. And this does go up to 6 amps, I'm mistaken, it does, it does handle 6 amps. So if I put more salt, theoretically, we're going to draw more current. Just let that mix up really good. I think that's going to be the magic number right there. Okay, let's give you one more look here. The piece that's connected to the anode is bubbling nicely, doing its thing. And you don't see much happening on that side yet, but you are going to start to see some dendrites hanging off of that when we're done. But we're now we're near that yet. So we're at 2.7 amps. I'll give this one more stir and then we're going to let it cook. Just to give you an update, you can see we're starting to turn green here. This is going to take probably about two hours to do simply because I have a gallon of uh, liquid in here. So we're actually making great progress. Things are working well. We'll come back when it's done. Okay, you can see we have a nice shade of green now, but I want it to be a little bit darker. I'm going to use this solution for many other things. So I'm going to let this uh, cook a little bit more here. We're at uh, 4 amps, 27 volts. It's still humming along nicely. I did have to change the clip leads. I had some faulty clip leads on there and I noticed it was cutting in and out. So I put my meter on there and was watching it. So we replaced those, so we're good there. So we're going to let this bake just a little bit more and then we'll uh, wrap up. So we'll show you when that's ready. One other thing to note, I am giving this a stir every 
15, 20 minutes or so, just to keep things moving. If you look closely, you could probably see some particles floating around down there. We're going to have to filter this anyway. That's required for the process. So after this is done and it cools off, and it's very hot, this thing is really hot to the touch right now. When we get done, we're going to let it cool off, and then we're going to filter it through cheesecloth or a coffee filter. We're going to make sure that all the impurities and the dendrites that have fallen in there, uh, little pieces of nickel, that's what's going to be on the bottom. I can actually see them forming in the center there. We're going to get rid of all those impurities, and then when we use it to plate, we know we're going to have a really, really clean solution. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Be back. I'm going to show you the impurities that form in the bottom. Right there. I don't know if we can get a focus. Let's see. Right there are little tiny pieces of nickel. That's what you need to filter out. Okay? That other half moons thing that you see is a sticker on the bottom. That's not part of it. It's really right there. Those are little tiny pieces of nickel that have fallen off. Okay? Okay guys, I think we're done. That's about as, uh, as emerald green as you can get. So we're, uh, we're in great shape. You may be able to see the smoke coming off of that thing. We're going to turn this power supply off. Let's check the temperature of this thing and see how hot it is. Maybe you could see that. 128 degrees in there. It's hot. So, this is why you want to use a glass container and not plastic. Because this is going to get very hot, right? The more amperage you have going through it, the hotter it's going to get. So that's going to conclude this episode one of nickel plating for this uh, for the Radio Craftsman RC8. In the next episode, we're going to show you the plating process that we use this for. So we're going to disconnect all the wires. We're going to let this cool off, and we're going to put a cover on it. And then we're, this during the week, I'm going to filter it and have it ready. This way, when we do our plating uh, video, it's all set to go. All right. Hope you found this interesting. Take care. One other thing I want to show you. These two pieces were roughly the same size when we started. You can see this one is much smaller. Right? This is where um, all the bubbling was happening, right here. And you can see here, there's all the dendrites that are attached to it. So the nickel has come across and it started to form on here and it's very, very fine. And it's very, very fragile. So that's what we've got laying in the bottom of the jar. Alright, that's really it for now guys. See ya.